In this lesson, I'll show you two examples on how to use the clausius clapeyron equation to predict the vapor pressure at a given temperature. The first question reads, methanol has a normal boiling point at 64.6 degrees Celsius and a heat of vaporization of 35.2 kilojoules per mole. What is the vapor pressure of methanol at 12 degrees Celsius? Now, if you don't know already, the clausius clapeyron equation is a linear equation that relates the temperature and the pressure. And all linear equations have the formula y is equal to mx plus b, where m represents the slope and b represents the y-intercept. Now what's interesting about the clausius clapeyron equation is that when you find the slope, it actually relates two things. The heat of vaporization of that molecule, in our case methanol, and the gas constant, which is shown right here. The two are related in the following way where slope is equal to negative delta H VAP over the gas constant R. Luckily, they've given us the heat of vaporization. So we can fill in this part, but first we have to convert kilojoules into joules because the gas constant here is in joules. Let's go ahead and do that. 35.2 kilojoules per mole to go from kilojoules to joules we'll write down one kilojoule and at the top 1000 joules. So technically we're multiplying this number by 1000. If we do that we should end up with 35,200. Also keep in mind that all three numbers given are three significant digits. This one, this one, and that one. So I'll substitute this value right into here so I can find the slope for my equation. The reason why I'm finding the slope is because this will help us eventually find out the vapor pressure of methanol at 12 degrees. And I'll show you how in a moment. So we'll take 35,200 and divide it by the gas constant. 35200 0, 0 times negative 1 divided by the gas constant 8.314. And we end up with negative 4233 decimal 82. Negative 422. 3, 3, decimal 8. Now remember, our final answer needs to be three significant figures. I've written down 5 here, so just as a reminder, I'll place a dot right here so that I know when to stop. This right here represents the slope. Now to find the slope of a linear equation, we use the formula m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, where x and y represent the coordinates of a point found on the graph. Now they've given us two points. The first of two is shown right here. 64.6 and since we're told that it has a normal boiling point that means the pressure as discussed in this part is 760 torr. Remember what they're asking. They're asking what is the vapor pressure at 12 degrees. So we have a point with missing information. 12.0 and we don't know the pressure at this point so I'll represent it as x our unknown variable. One thing that you have to keep in mind is that when you create this equation the clausius clapeyron equation you actually have to do two adjustments to these numbers. For the temperature it has to be in Kelvin and you have to reciprocate that number. Let's do one thing at a time. First let's change 64.6 into Kelvin using this formula. I'll add 64.6 to 273.15. 64.6 plus 273.15. And we end up with 337.75. 337.75. And we reciprocate. So let's go ahead and do that. 1 divided by 337.75 gives us approximately 0 0.00296. 0 0.00296. 0 and remember, this has to be three significant figures. And this number, the adjustments that we make to the y coordinate, is that we take the ln of this number, the natural log. So ln of 760 gives us 6.6333. 6.6333 and remember both of these need to be three significant figures. 
So this is our point on the graph. And we'll substitute this into x1 and y1 eventually. Although I still need to make the adjustment here too. So to make this into Kelvin, I'll add 273.15, 12 plus 273.15, giving us 285.15, 285.15, remember it has to be three significant figures, and we'll reciprocate it, one divided by that number, and we end up with 0.003506. 0 0.003506. That represents the x coordinate of our point, and we're still looking for x. Now let's substitute these numbers into this formula. y2 we don't know. In fact, this right here is y2. So I'll leave it as y2. Minus y1, it was 6.6333 over this number we do know, it's right here, 0 0.003506. And this number we know is right there, 0 0.00296. All of this is equal to this number, negative 4233.8. And we have to solve for y sub 2. Now keep in mind, that we took the natural log of that. So technically, this should be ln y sub 2. A lot of work, but we're getting there. To solve for y sub 2, first I need to combine these and multiply both sides of the equation by their difference. So 0 0.003506 minus 0 0.00296 and I'll multiply that fraction that I got, which probably on your calculator you got a decimal. My calculator just happens to put it in fractions. By negative 4233.8, and I have negative 2.3116. Negative 2.3116. That's the left side of the equation. And on the right side of the equation, I still have the numerator of this equation, minus 6.6333. Now, I'll move this number over here, and all I will have left is ln y sub 2 on the right side. 2.3116 plus, we're moving the number over, so it changes its symbol. And now on the left side, I have 4.316. 4.3216. Is equal to ln y sub 2. To find out this number, we actually have to raise both sides of this equation as powers to the base e. Because only then will this e and this ln cancel out, leaving you only with y sub 2 on the right side. So we'll take e, Euler's number, 4.3216 as the base to the power, and we end up with 75.309 is equal to y sub 2. That number right there represents the pressure at 12 degrees. Now, of course, this needs to be to three significant figures. So we'll stop writing after that 3. And it will be 7513 tor. And there you have it. That's the answer to question number 1. If you would like to see the solution to question number 2, Make sure you watch question two of this series. We'll see you soon.